reviewing uh, papers by uh, colleagues that are not writing specifically about information systems. But the idea here is for you to check if the paper follows that structure of a, 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 an empirical paper based on theoretical, uh, well, at least, or, or that, that relates to some, some, some theory that exists before with an attempt to improve, uh, improve the, 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 the knowledge that we already have about a phenomenon, right? So the, uh, you, you may see that some of the papers, if you, if you have to review two papers, you, you may see one of them may not be necessarily information systems. But again, the idea there is not that you review the quality of the, the literature review, for example, because if it's, a, if it's an area that you don't, uh, that you don't know well, uh, you will not be able to say if that's the state of the arts, right? But you, you can still notice if people are citing um, literature that is uh, recent, that seems relevant, uh, and, and if that literature is used to allow the, the writer to, let's say, to show the tools that it will be using to analyze his or her own data at the end. Because, of course, we, the literature review that we do always has, a, has to have a purpose, and the purpose is whatever we write in that, what I usually call chapter two of the paper, or the, or the dissertation, or the thesis, will end up being used in chapter four or chapter five, wherever you do the analysis, to confront whatever your data bring to the analysis, to whatever uh, the authors that have already studied that uh, before uh, um, uh, have, uh, you know, have, uh, have, have done or have, or, or have uh, presented before in their own studies, right? Uh, so it doesn't, it, it, one thing that you will notice is that when we become, um, let's say, familiarized with, uh, with academic research, uh, we are able to understand research even in different topics. If you get a paper, for example, uh, in medicine, we are able to see if it's a, if, if it's a scientific paper. Uh, it has to have a session in which previous work will be discussed uh, uh, and, or, or a session in which ideas from the literature will be brought so that um, the hypothesis of the, the paper or, the, or even the research questions of the paper, when it's not so quantitative, uh, will be drawn upon. Okay? Uh, so we are able to, to read papers that, uh, that, that are prepared by, by scientists or by researchers in other fields than ours and still see if it seems right, right? We are not going to be able, of course, if it's not our field, we're not going to be able to give a very strong uh, um, uh, answer to, is this uh, really relevant? Because you may say, well, I don't know, uh, some other authors may have already solved this problem recently, and, uh, and as I'm not a researcher in this field, I'm not aware of that. So I can't, I can't say that this is uh, relevant science, but I can say that it's written in good uh, academic format, at least. And this is what you're going to be doing with the papers that we will be reviewing from today until uh, next week, which is going to be our last class, right? We, the, uh, uh, next week we will wrap up this, uh, this course here, the, the research seminars for 2002, uh, so 2022, uh, uh, you know, trying to rescue everything that we have discussed over the, over the semester, uh, but also uh, getting your impressions about reviewing, uh, 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 reviewing the papers that you, that you will review, okay? Um, all right, uh, I don't know, it's strange because today we only have the Brazilians here. Uh, I don't know what happened to the Panamanians. Maybe, Pan Panama is not in the, the World Cup, right? So they're not watching their 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 team's uh, game uh, so I don't know I, I don't know where they are but anyway um, so the the idea of uh, of our work today is to let me just change scenes here is to discuss our 15th topic how to address reviewer requests uh, requested changes or corrections to a paper right? when we write a paper and we get feedback, of course, the idea of the feedback that we receive is uh, to help us improve the quality of our own work, right? So when we receive uh, 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 this uh, feedback uh, for a conference paper, sometimes 
the conference still gives us time to make little changes to the, the paper if it, if, it, if it has been accepted. You can still make some changes uh, uh, that will be that you will try to incorporate in the final uh, version of the um, of your paper. Many times, many conferences, because of the the timing, uh, they don't even allow you to change the paper. Your your paper is either accepted as is as it was proposed originally, uh, or it is uh, rejected. Uh, you still get uh, the response from from the reviewers. You still get some the, the reviewers' impressions. And then the, uh, those uh, impressions or those remarks, those comments, uh, can be used to prepare an improved version of that conference paper that you may uh, wish to, to submit to a, to a journal afterwards. Uh, but for many conferences, uh, there isn't much time uh, or even there isn't even the possibility of changing the paper. And even when you do have the possibility of changing your paper or, or improving your paper, it's hardly ever going to be a, another review round. So for example, AMSIS, AMSIS does give us uh, the opportunity of uh, providing a, a, an improved version of the paper after we get the feedback from the reviewers. But we do not have to respond to the reviewers. The reviewers are not going to read the paper again. Uh, so it's uh, <coughs> what we do is we we understand, when we understand what the reviewers were asking and if we think that that was reasonable, what we do is we go there and make the changes that we find possible and, and interesting to the paper, but it's not going to be reviewed again. Okay? For a conference, it, there is usually not enough time for that. So the paper goes, maybe there is a, a formal acceptance of this uh, next version of the paper, but at least the impression I have is that most of the times, uh, that paper has already been either accepted or rejected based on the previous version and 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 the and, and the the how do I say the, the chairs of the event or the, the people that are responsible for accepting the papers uh, will assume that if you provide a, a second version of the paper that's going to be uh, better the, than the previous version which was already considered let's say good enough to be accepted okay so basically for conferences. Uh, we do not have to worry too much about uh, uh, the, the changes uh, that are requested or at least about uh, re re uh, responding uh, or, uh, to, 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 the, to the reviewers and saying and explaining how we addressed their concerns about our paper. Right? However, when we are writing a paper to a journal, that is absolutely necessary because when, uh, when the reviewers show concern, when they, they, they they show us that there is an issue, a problem with our, our paper. They want it to, to be solved before that paper can be published. And, they, and, and the paper will be back to them so that they uh, can check if we did uh, what they had requested or not. And if, you, if, if we didn't do it, or if we didn't do it to, to, the, to the standards that they were expecting, the paper will be rejected. Okay? So what we'll be discussing today is how to address uh, these requests for changes and corrections in a paper, mainly for journals. Okay, uh, this is not a requirement usually for conferences, because in conferences papers don't usually go through a second round of review. But yeah, go on, Patricia. Teacher, uma perguntinha. Por exemplo, para a gente fazer a correção dos papers aqui na turma. Uh, geralmente, quando eu corrijo, eu uso os comentários lá e aquela parte da revisão dos marcadores. E daí você, a gente pode utilizar para fazer a correção dos papers? Uh, well, you will receive, you'll notice that uh, many uh, of the papers that were, were uploaded here are PDF papers. So you do not have the same level of editing that you, can do, that, that you have on Word, for example. But you can still use it. Uh, for example, uh, I mean, if you have PDF uh, reader, it already allows us to, let's say, to include a balloon with uh, some, uh, some impressions. Okay. Uh, and, and I think this is pretty good. This is okay for us here because what we will be doing is not a blind review, right? If you were a reviewer reviewing these papers for a conference, sorry, for a, for a, for a journal or for a conference, uh, you would have to be very careful in including those, uh, those, uh, these remarks or, or this, uh, these additions to, to the paper because many times it shows your name. So, one thing that you can do is before you start reviewing, you go there and change the, let's say, the, the, the author, uh, the author of those changes, 
and and you just include their reviewer for example then it's okay you you it's important that we never break the idea of the double blind review uh, by which we mean the author doesn't know who reviewed the paper and the reviewer doesn't know the author okay but in our case here it's not going to be double blind review uh, you will know who reviewed your paper for for the sake of simplicity to make it easier and also because as we are a group we all sort of uh, uh, had access to the same examples of what what we should have in a paper right so whenever you, you tell your colleague look uh, 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 from what we discussed in this uh, in, in our research seminars here it's important that we have a clear objective stated already in the introduction preferably close to the end of the introduction uh, after we have contextualized the, the, the problem and maybe justified the work uh, so uh, and, 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 and the same thing with with all the other parts of the, the document you, you all were submit you were all submitted to the same ideas so you saw you're sort of all committed uh, to the same uh, ideas right now right and we'll do this and, and I think there's another reason for us to do this openly is that we I mean we're doing this among uh, colleagues uh, uh, in fact, I think that I also propose that uh, that we we in, in in our academic community we should also do a lot more uh, open reviews uh, than double blind. Double blind is, is is done because people expect it to be fair, and and and, and so that you're not uh, judging or you're not valuing the the author, but you're valuing the work itself. Uh, but I think that we are, as a community, mature enough to try and do that, uh, even uh, you know, if, even if there is some some level of competition among uh, researchers for for space in, in academia. Let's say there is some competition among universities and everything. But we st I still think that we are. We, uh, I mean, we, we we can understand that that happens, but we can be uh, uh, let's say uh, honest and 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 direct enough to think well what I'm uh, what I'm reviewing here is the paper not the author not the university not uh, this author's ideas about that, that, that I've seen in other papers I'm just reviewing this piece of work uh, so I let's say I'm an advocate of open reviews uh, I think uh, that will benefit from that uh, in the future uh, and, and, and this is what is what we'll be doing but what we will uh, today what we will do is uh, think of how what, of a strategy to deal with requests uh, of changes uh, and corrections proposed by uh, by reviewers and uh, I will do this by showing you that there's this response letter here uh, that some authors sent to a journal for which I was working as a reviewer in fact a couple of weeks ago uh, and uh, this is how the the authors responded of course you may argue isn't there a chance that we are breaking the the double double blind review process here uh, with uh, with me showing this paper I don't know who the author is right now but after the paper is is uh, published uh, not just me but you will also know who the author is if the paper is published right <coughs> but well my, my intention here is uh, I think that there is a chance that uh, let's say there's some breach of the of the uh, double blind review by the so, so the, the author may eventually see this video uh, and say ah okay so Alex was one of the reviewers there is, is a very uh, I, mean, I mean it's a very small chance but that exists I still prefer to risk it here because uh, well first of all I do think that the, the opinions that I showed in my review I would have shown even if I knew the authors uh, so again uh, it goes along with my idea that open reviews are not any worse than double blind reviews uh, but uh, mainly because I, I, I thought that they, they organized the response in an interesting way and I wanted to share that with you. I think it's a good strategy if you do that in your own papers. So what happened is, well, they had sent their paper. Notice that this is already, this R1 here uh, stands for, it's a, it's a, it's a revision uh, of the paper. So they probably had already, well, they, they had already submitted the paper. In fact, we, the, the reviewers, reviewed uh, the original paper and now they're submitting a second uh, well this revised version review one uh, uh, and uh, and they started by, sh by by providing us with uh, with uh, some uh, w w with, w with their responses to the reviewers notice uh, they start saying yeah, the, the paper the paper will come uh, so th there are 26 pages here because the first few pages are just res uh, a response to the reviewers that reviewed 
the previous version of their paper, who are, I assume, exactly the same reviewers who then reviewed the, the, the new version of, of the paper. Okay, so here uh, they had they 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 will address the the comments and remarks made by reviewer one. Uh, I, I will read some of these so that you understand uh, how it goes. Basically, what they did, of course, when the reviewers sent them the reviews, they did not send them a table. They sent they probably sent a, a an, an unformatted uh, text. Uh, but then they started cutting and pasting the the reviewers' ideas here so that they could have uh, the reviewers' comment on 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 the first column here and then have their own response here so that the reviewer notice very easily how uh, each of the of their concerns was addressed. So, for example, here they say, here we have what the reviewer one said. Dear authors, thank you for letting me review your paper. Uh, well, this is basically the guys being nice at the beginning to, to start saying, uh, well, uh, it's usually breaking the ice, let's say. Uh, please find my comments below. Uh, and then they, they start saying, the paper adequately reviews the extant literature, although this review does not refer, sorry, does not offer anything beyond prior reviews. So there's some criticism here already, uh, saying that whatever the review shows here is not different to what has had already be, been shown in other reviews, such as the one that they highlight here, and is therefore not particularly advancing the literature. Well, notice, should, the, should this be a, a, a big concern for the authors, that their review doesn't go beyond any other reviews that were made before? Not really. Uh, if this was a Systematic literature review, one of those papers that intends to provide a literature review that aggregates uh, whatever has been written about a topic before and tries to, to provide new highlights or new, new, new insights uh, based on, on what others have done before, maybe this criticism would be, uh, you know, a, a problematic one. Here, they, I mean, they noticed that, but at the same time, it was not the purpose of the paper to be a more thorough review or... or, or in any other ways, a better review than any, any any previous reviews, because the review here is only made so that the, the authors can go on with their, their arguments later on. Okay, so this is not a huge problem, but, but we'll see how they, they addressed it. And, they, and, and, and the reviewer also said, says, the method section does not really refer to an established scientific research methods. Uh, it is thus hard to judge how scientific the actual data collection was. Well, this this is definitely, this can be very problematic, right? When someone says the method you used is not a scientific method, so how, how can you write a scientific paper if you do not use a scientific method? This, this is, this is a stronger, would be a stronger problem. Uh, <coughs> one thing here in this paper is that the authors proposed from the beginning, and I'll have to go back to the first page here, that their paper was not a scientific paper, they claim it's an opinion paper. And by claiming their paper is an opinion paper, uh, this not only this reviewer, in fact, uh, this is, was one of my remarks also. It's it's very risky. Most most uh, journals, most journals do not publish uh, opinion papers, right? Because opinion papers are just opinions. Uh, maybe an opinion paper by someone who's, again, uh, very, very senior in the fields could be interesting. Uh, but opinion papers do not seem to be uh, the best kind of paper for one to write uh, because the, re the reviewers will already be, they're looking for a method, right? Even, if, if, even after they said that what they were writing was uh, an opinion paper, look, the reviewer wanted a method. And I, I'll, I'll see, in, in this case, there are several reviewers. You will see that all of them pointed out that one problem was everyone was questioning, should this be a, a, an opinion paper or should the authors spend a little more time in uh, getting a stronger analysis method and then transform it into a real scientific paper. But anyway, uh, those were the, the first remarks here uh, that they, the, of course, reviewer one has many other remarks. They just, the authors chose to, to separate this beginning of the, of the reviewer's uh, comments here. And then they, here to the, to the right, they explain what they did. So first, thank you for your comments. The acknowledge, uh, we acknowledge that the purpose of the review is to situate the opinion paper. It's not our intention to go beyond prior reviews. So in this way, I think they, they did it right, right? Okay, they, they, they had the same impression that I had. I, I did not write anything against their review because they thought that for the purpose of their paper, it was okay. Uh, so notice that what they're doing here is they're not saying 
oh, sorry, uh, we will work harder and, and, and make sure that our review becomes uh, the strongest review uh, about the field uh, ever made or whatever, right? They did not respond to, to, the author, to, to the reviewer's request by saying, we will do what you are demanding. They are actually saying why they are not doing what the reviewer wanted, okay? That may be the case many times, you know, reviewers are people that are reading your, your paper and, and, and you spend a lot of time doing the research, uh, deciding on what to write. The reviewer has a quick impression about your work after reading it. So sometimes the reviewer may, uh, may be right, but sometimes uh, you can convince the reviewer that what you did was the right thing, okay? Uh, so notice, it's, it's, this is a good thing here. You do not, as a writer, you do not have to change your paper simply because the reviewers or a specific reviewer wants you to, right? Uh, it's good when you have more than one reviewer because then you can see uh, if it's something that everyone perceived the same way, maybe you, 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 you should think, well, in this case, I think that I am, that they're right and I'm wrong, all right? Or at least if I am right, I will have to change the way I express myself because I'll have to convince them that, that I'm right, okay? Uh, with respect to the methods section, uh, this is intended to be an opinion paper, not a research paper. Nevertheless, our opinions are grounded in data from, uh, from the interview. It's, uh, the paper is all based on one single interview, and this is what, what would make it a weak scientific paper, right? Uh, we use interviews as an, an important method of research, but uh, it's, it's very difficult to convince uh, our readers that a single interview is able to generate uh, new knowledge that can be uh, qualified as a scientific knowledge or, or that we can say, well, this is somewhat generalizable and so on and so forth. So this is again, their, the way of escaping this was to try and say that their paper was an opinion paper. You will see, I will not spend a lot of time with uh, each of the reviewers here. Uh, maybe you can read the paper later. It's an interesting paper. It's very well written. Uh, it's a paper ab about uh, uh, the, the role of the CDO, the chief digital officer uh, in, in organizations. Uh, and basically they claim that the chief digital officer is the executive in charge of doing digital transformation. I myself have some problems with that because I always thought that, uh, you know, since the 90s we were proposing that the CIO was that guy, right? We expected that the CIO was someone who would be uh, in a position of understanding technology um, well enough and being able to talk to the technologists, but also being uh, able to talk to the, the executives and the strategists in the organization to make sure that the digital transformation would happen. In the, in the 90s, we did not call it digital transformation at that time. And I think it was one of our first classes I showed you that we already discussed uh, the possibilities of using IT to change the business or to, 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 to change not only the processes, uh, which means uh, improving uh, efficiency, but also changing the business itself, which uh, would be more like changing or becoming more effective, right? Um, and, uh, but anyway, yeah, so, so the paper is about this function of the, the CDO, uh, and they, they interviewed the CEO of a, a very large Chinese uh, technology company that develops software uh, to help other other companies do their own digital transformation. Uh, uh, again, with just one interview, it's, it would be difficult to, to consider that a scientific paper, but it still is a paper. I, I thought, in, in fact, my review was, my, my opinion as a reviewer was that the paper, as an opinion paper, would be interesting. I mean, we who are interested in information systems would benefit from reading that paper because it could give us some ideas of studies that we could, could conduct and so on and so forth. So <laughs> it's, um, uh, although not a, an academic, uh, not, not a scientific paper, still a paper that deserves to be published somewhere. Uh, in fact, in my review, I said, it's not, not, not a decision that has to be made by the reviewers. I liked the paper. I, I thought that it was interesting to read. I thought that it brought me some uh, a new information. It's definitely new, new to me, not new to, to academia. Uh, so it, 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 it helps. Uh, 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 generate a debate about the topic. So there's a lot of good uh, issues about it. Uh, the only thing that I don't know is if the, the journal, in this case here, the journal, the International Journal of Information Management, uh, I, I don't know the, the journal well enough to know if, if they accept opinion papers and even if they would qualify this paper as an opinion paper. 
So I said, this is not a problem for the reviewer. This is a problem now for the editor. The editor will have to decide if this paper fits the journal or if it has to go and be published somewhere else. It would definitely be a good paper to be published, for example, in a, in a journal that is more like uh, uh, practitioner oriented uh, than, than scientifically oriented. But anyway, uh, notice that they're responding to each of the things that uh, each of the comments that the, the reviewer had, right? And uh, finally, they say here, we do provide more information about the interview protocol and hope that this alleviates concerns about the scientific nat nature of our data collection, although they do not claim that their paper is scientific. Notice, then they start, again, if, uh, considering that the reviewer's re uh, letter was written in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in just, just as flat text, they simply cut and paste all the parts of the, the reviewer's um, comments here so that they could uh, comment on each one of them. I find this is a, uh, in fact, I use this kind of uh, uh, method as well when I have to provide, uh, of, uh, when I have to respond to reviewers, I like this idea of building a table uh, and, and, and making sure that, well, this is what you said, this is how I dealt with it. Uh, many times saying, yes, I fixed it exactly the way you, you, you proposed. In other cases saying, well, you know, I understand uh, uh, what you mean. Uh, I'm trying to write it in a way that it does not generate the, the kinds of doubts that you had, but I cannot do what you are proposing because that would simply require me to either do the, the whole research again uh, or, or, or it would be a different research. Sometimes the reviewer wants to change the, the paper that you're writing, right? You have one ob objective and they want you to write a, a different paper. Come on, you're the writer. So the reviewer may be interested uh, and, and, and think that you could have a better paper if you wrote it in a different direction, but that was not what you wanted to do. So uh, stick to your ideas or at least defend your ideas if they are defendable, okay? Uh, <clears throat> let's not go through uh, each of the, uh, I mean, if you're curious, and I, I, and I would recommend that you read this, maybe even read the paper first. Of course, you will be reading already the, 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 the revised version of the paper, right? I'm not, I have not included here the original version. I included the revised version. But even reading the revised for, uh, version, you will notice that problematic issue of classifying this paper as an opinion paper. You may, some of you may be more inclined to say, yes, uh, this is a paper I think that should be published. Others would say, no, this does not fit the kind of journals we usually have. I don't know. But anyway, what the reviewer does is they express their opinion about the paper and then the author can uh, either accept uh, and change the paper or refuse the, the or, 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 or somehow uh, debate uh, the ideas proposed by the, by the reviewer, showing or providing their reasons not to go the way the, the, the reviewer wanted. I will not go through, you know, all the points uh, here expressed by reviewer one, but notice there, there are many, oh, sorry, in fact, I was going to say there are many, reviewer one was not, it was short, notice, basically what the reviewer one wrote, if, of course, if the, if the author brought all the, the all of, of the, the review views was the, that, that first paragraph and the second paragraph. So, so may, let, let, let's have a look at the, the whole review by reviewer one as considering it short. Uh, this also gives you an idea of what a good review is in terms of extent. Uh, uh, you don't review a paper to say, I like the paper, I think it should be published. You do not give any contribution to, to, to the author and you give very little contribution to the editor. Uh, the editor may, may think, well, good that someone already liked it, but I will have to read it now uh, to see if I like it also because uh, I don't know if this, if, what, what were the reasons for this, guy's, uh, this guy to like it, right? So you should say what you liked. Uh, if there are issues, and I would say there's always uh, something that can be improved, you should detail that also. I think that reviewer one here was sort of, maybe he, he or she did not have much time. Uh, it was short, right? But let's see the, 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 the second part of the review here. So the reviewer says, the, the interview is interesting, but it is just a single case and naturally a complete self-report, which may be tainted by various biases. Basically they're saying, how would we know if the this interview with this digital, uh, sorry, uh, uh, forgot the, 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 the chief, this chief digital officer, the CDO, how do we know that his ideas, his or her ideas, in this case, his ideas uh, are the same or are similar to, to the ideas that other CDOs would have, right? In general, that's what we, we want, even when we're doing qualitative work, we do qualitative work to try and generalize things. Uh, of course, quantitative is, is much stronger for generalizing, but qualitative sometimes is, is also good either to 
provide us uh, 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 with ideas that may be generalizable after s more studies or sometimes to show that, that that we have already generalized based on other research has problems because we have a case that is different. For example, th that, that thing that Pope's, uh, 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 Popper's idea uh, of we have, let's say, yeah, this um, truth that all swans are white and then we only need someone to qualitative show us that there is a black swan in, in, in a lake that we cannot say that all swans are like uh, are white any longer right uh, but in this case they say well it's just one interview the discussion ties uh, tries to tie together extent research but it does not really show where the data from this project exactly challenges contradicts advances prior knowledge this is another interesting thing right if we do have a, a, a literature review that shows a lot of things about, for example, this uh, this role, the, the, the chief digital officer, uh, and then we have an interview with someone, someone, and this person says that things are exactly like that, what is the contribution of the paper, right? We either have to show that things are not exactly how we thought before, or we have to try to systematize something and, and, and come up with a general, generalizable uh, theory. Right. Uh, when we, we, we come there, we, we come here, we present a, lot, a literature review and then we present uh, the data from our interviews. And, and then at the end, people say, so what? What what, the, what does this guy propose that was that we, we didn't already know before? That's not that's a weak paper. OK, when we have a paper that only says what has already what is already known, what is the reason for us to read this paper? It's just a confirmation of something that has already been confirmed. Right. And so no need for that. So they're challenging that. We'll have to see how they respond to this because this is this is a, it may be an important issue, right? Uh, and then uh, and then the reviewer still says, "I feel bad writing this, but my overall assessment is, is that this is an interesting interview, but it it does not sufficiently contribute to the, to the scientific literature to warrant publication in a scientific outlet." Why is he saying that if he or she feels bad about this? Probably feeling the same thing that I was feeling. I said it was a, a, a paper that I read with pleasure. It was interesting to read, but at the same time, it did not follow our guidelines, right? If these guys had written this paper and sent here to our research seminars, we would probably give them a lot of remarks saying, look, uh, it's the objective is not necessarily clear and, and, and this and that, because it did not follow that more usual um, pattern of some uh, uh, research that is based on empirical data but compares that with a uh, theory that already exists trying to come up with a uh, new theory it, it doesn't do that and this is why all reviewers are somewhat inclined to say i like the paper but i'm not sure if it should be published see this again to show you why i think you should stick to to the template that i provided you because uh, if you do it right nobody's going to say well, I'm not sure if this is, is, is uh, publishable or not, because you will have something interesting there for, for academia. Okay? Uh, let's see how they respond to this. So first they say, we acknowledge that single cases can be biased and, uh, in that they are subjective accounts and there is no attempt to achieve objectivity by interviewing multiple, uh, sorry, uh, and there's no attempt to achieve objectivity, which would be ob obtained by interviewing multiple people. Uh, we know this is a limitation. Uh, so notice they, they say we have our paper has a limitation here. We are now more careful to position the opinion vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the literature so as to explain how the paper goes beyond prior knowledge. They do think that they have <coughs> that their paper goes beyond prior knowledge, and they say we now did something about it. If I had, if I were them, if I were the authors here, I would even include here. We we did this by including, let's say, this paragraph on session whatever. Uh, to make it even easier for the, the reviewer to understand that they did that uh, and, and to convince that that happened even before the reviewer rereads the whole paper. Okay, I would have done that. They didn't do it, but they said at least they said we we we, we changed things to make sure uh, that we, we do think that we have uh, something that goes beyond prior knowledge. Maybe it was not as clear in the previous version, but we improved that here. It would be good if they, they cited how they did that and, and what is actually, it, it would be easy also to say, well, and we go beyond prior knowledge uh, because our paper uh, has made us, uh, or, or this research has made us realize 
whatever thing happens and, and, and then it stress it here so that the the reviewer becomes more confident that they actually address the issue although the opinions are based on empirical data as well as our own thoughts we acknowledge that this is not a typical research paper and thus would not position this as a contribution to the scientific literature instead we intend that this is a provocative opinion that will engender discussion among scholars and practitioners in the domain of digital transformation. So they're saying we're not, our paper is not uh, a scientific paper. And again, then the, the editor will have to decide if it's not a scientific paper, should I publish it in a scientific journal? Well, if the, the, if the journal has already a section there that is a section for opinion papers, maybe it will fit well there, right? And <laughs> and the, excuse me, and, 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 and maybe we don't have much that we, we should say against it, okay? Well, I will skip reviewer two, right? Uh, let, let's just think of the size of the review, okay? So reviewer one had basically sort of two paragraphs, right? Uh, one paragraph that is here under number one and another paragraph, another item. Well, it's, it's more here, they have already items, but anyway, uh, it's, let's say it's just, it's just, just that. Reviewer 2, let's see if uh, Reviewer 2 was more detailed or not. Again, uh, one thing that is interesting here, thank you for the opportunity to read and review the paper and the name of the paper. Notice here, this, these guys here follow the guidelines. In fact, I think that they're the ones that did it better. Uh, the guidelines that we usually receive as reviewers, they, they should, they're basically here situating things and saying that they, they understood what the paper was about. They say, the paper addresses an important and interesting topic the role of the CDO in digital transformation, and also in a particularly relevant context, digital transformation in China. So, of course, why are they saying this uh, here to the to the authors? Of course, the authors know what the paper does, right? So they, they didn't have to read it from the reviewer. But uh, but the reviewer does that for two reasons. First, it helps the editor who who, uh, who at this stage may not have read the paper yet, or, or may have read the paper very very quickly. Uh, it also helps showing that they were careful enough to understand what the paper was about before they started judging the paper, right? Notice that about this comment here, the reviewers, sorry, the authors didn't have much to say. They just said, oh, thank you for your comments and the appreciation of the potential significance of the work. Um, and then uh, they start saying, after showing that they, they, they read with caution, they start saying, well, that there are two main issues with the paper. The first main issue is re related to research methods. Notice again. When we are reviewing papers for a research journal, we expect methodology to be strong. So this is this is the weak uh, problem with this paper. They decided to write uh, an opinion paper, uh, and maybe and, and maybe this journal specifically has a very clear um, opinion uh, opinion paper sash, section. But the reviewers many times they are used to journals that only publish scientific research. So and then and then of course he. The, the, the reviewer here will have a lot of concerns about that. The reviewer said that there were two main problems. Qualitative approach is not dependent on the size of the sample, like the number of interviewees. However, what is important is to consider the research question and for addressing the role of the CDO in digital transformation in a Chinese context, it is obviously appropriate to interview a CDO in China working with digital transformation. How many interviews? Asked Myers. Myers is, a, is an author in information systems that uh, does a lot of interesting work on qualitative work. I recommend that you read uh, this uh, paper by Myers here, 2013, mainly if you're qualitative researchers. Uh, in his uh, book about qualita qualitative research in business and management. Uh, he then draws on his own experience about being asked to re revise a paper based on 49 interviews with a question of it, uh, of if it was possible to do more. It's crazy, right? Uh, uh, I mean, 49 interviews seems already too, too, too many. Uh, and, 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 and here, uh, uh, claim, claim that. But when you do 49 interviews and, and a reviewer asks you if, you if you could have done more, well, basically what you have to say, well, it depends. Uh, if I'm snowballing and if there is no, um, no new data coming in, maybe I could have stopped after five or six interviews. I didn't even need to get to 49. But anyway, uh, the answer is not the number, but if there is a point of saturation, uh, see, a point of saturation, it, it means when you're doing interviews and you get to, to another interview and you, you notice that you didn't learn anything from the new interview and then you get a second, uh, you do another interview still and you, you, you don't gain any new knowledge and then you say, well, okay, from now on, I'm risking spending a lot of time interviewing people to get very little knowledge, so it's time to stop. Uh, 
so the point of saturation is a strategy that is used when we are deciding the size uh, of, a, of a sample to study. Uh, uh, here, I think this is probably the second problem. Uh, the later is the second, so the second problem is to overcome different biases, egg elite biases, no, uh, by allowing only the voice of one leader, which biases may uh, this lead to, right? So they only talk to one person. They could have had a scientific uh, paper by talking to the CDO and then by talking to many other people in the organization and seeing uh, how the different perspectives ended up making, for example, the CDO's uh, uh, job easier or more difficult or whatever, uh, but then it would be a different paper. Okay. Uh, all right. I, I, again, I don't want to spend uh, uh, a lot of uh, time in, in checking this. It would be good if you have time, read the paper and then you read the reviewers again. Uh, it's a good example of how to perform reviews. Notice that this reviewer here has uh, written much more than the, the first one. See, we're still in reviewer two. Look, there's a lot of, still reviewer two, okay? A lot of, uh, I'd say that many times a review for for a journal uh, could be uh, several pages long. So sometimes the guys, uh, the, the authors say, come on, I write a 15 page paper and then I get a 20 page uh, review, uh, reviewer's remarks. Uh, the, 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 there are more remarks than, the, 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 let's say, the, the, the remarks from the reviewers are longer than the paper itself. Oh, and sometimes it happens. <coughs> but in general, what we don't want is to be too brief, not to be able to give the authors any idea of what, um, of, of how to improve their work. Uh, we can spend a little more time with reviewer three because reviewer three was me, okay? And, and so I understand very well what reviewer three is claiming here. Uh, and, and then I can probably go uh, explain a little bit what I expected from the from the author. So the paper is presented as an opinion paper, but it does uh, it does uh, it does fit that but it does fit that category. Uh, uh, in fact, here I think it's probably does not fit uh, that category well, considering that the reasoning is based on an interview with a chief digital officer of a large corporation about the digital transformation in his organization. Uh, there is this field data. So notice, even if it's just one interview, it, that is field data. It's it's data that was uh, achieved or and, and brought from an empirical uh, investigation uh, and, and that, that if analyzed properly and everything could lead to a scientific work. So there is uh, this field data collection and analysis of uh, an unstructured interview that leads to the author's argumentation and conclusion. Maybe the author decided to call it an opinion paper to avoid criticism against the, methodo against the methodological procedure that was chosen. My question to you, was the author able to avoid criticism against the methodological procedure, what do you think from the reviews that you've seen so far? No, right? Uh, I mean, there's still a lot of criticism simply because we all expect a paper to, in, in a, an academic journal to be uh, written following that recipe that I introduced to you in our, let's say, in our template here. Okay. Uh, in fact, one could argue that more robust results, conclusions, would be obtained if more people were interviewed. However, the paper does have its value because it delivers what it promises in the title, a reflection on digital transformation based on how it was conducted by a specific CDO in a specific organization. So here I'm saying, look, uh, the method is weak, uh, maybe we wanted more, but if we think of what is being promised, that's what is being delivered. Okay, Let's see what the authors wrote with respect to, to this comment of mine. Uh, we consider it to be a strength of the paper that our opinions are uh, bolstered by interview data with a, a, a practicing CDO. We accept that yes, some readers might think we call it an opinion paper so as to avoid the scholarly oversight and critique that would normally be associated with research papers. Uh, so notice that they, they do believe that some readers will think that. However, we deliberately chose to position this as an opinion paper because we do have opinions about the role of a CDO that are best expressed as opinions, not as scientifically demonstrated facts. Uh, we hope to influence researchers and practitioners, including CDOs, to think about the nature of digital transformation in the organization and the role that the CDO plays in leading the digital transformation. And again, they do that. You know, they. They provide us with uh, the, 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 the opportunity to reflect about it. And this is what I liked about the paper. 
Let me go, uh, we go on with my remarks here. There are a few issues the author could reflect about in preparation of an improved version of the paper. The first one is if indeed it makes sense to refer to the paper as an opinion paper. Right? At, at this stage here, I was trying to convince them that maybe they could uh, say, well, we do not want to escape uh, the criticism uh, of people that think that one interview is too little to, to, to do scientific research. Uh, we will assume that it's, it's, in, it's an empirically driven paper, that we collect data empirically, and we will structure it in a way that it provides us with an interesting uh, case. But anyway, uh, they did not follow my suggestion here. They say, thank you for your suggestion. You're correct that while we have chosen to position this as an opinion paper, this is not the only type of paper that could be written. In particular, it would be possible to undertake a more in-depth case study approach, whether of just one organization or of many. Uh, a second thing, again, back to my, to my remarks here, a second thing that needs to be better explained is what is really new about digital transformation. Most of the research developed in the information systems field seems to deal with what is more recently being called digital transformation. But is it different to the IT-enabled organization transformation of the 1990s? The author uh, quotes Vesso et al. 2021, who claims, who claim, who claim, that the IT-enabled digital transformation was about supporting the value proposition of organizations and not redefining an organization. Uh, this is a very debatable claim. Several of Venkatraman and Henderson papers, you, you read some of those, uh, just as an example, deal with the, with the redefinition of processes, networks, and the, the, the scope of business. If that is not redefining an organization, it's important to say what is and in which ways it is different to what was being proposed back then. Okay, so here they say, uh, with respect to the novelty of digital transformation when compared with the more established IT-enabled organizational change, well, this is a very good question to ask. We agree that the current wave of the digital transformation is perhaps best characterized as an extension of IT-enabled organizational transformation rather than an entirely new phenomenon. We do offer a definition of digital transformation but you may argue that this is no more than a few steps further down the line from IT-enabled uh, uh, organization transformation. Nevertheless, there is a large literature on digital transformation, and even if IT is no more than a, a buzzword, that is currently uh, fashionable, given that CDOs exist and that organizations are attempting to transform themselves with digital technologies, the legitimacy of the topic appears to be established. However, the critical, uh, uh, the critical stance that you take in asking this question prompts us to query the uniqueness of the phenomenon itself, and uh, this is something that we consider in the introduction. So, in fact, they're saying that they did some change based on my remarks here. Okay. So, but notice again uh, how good it is to, to, to have a table in which you show what the reviewers proposed, and then you say what you did, because it provides uh, uh, the reviewers with a, 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 a good understanding of, uh, of exactly how the authors uh, dealt with the, the, the reviews. They, they could have, and many times, authors say, okay, we, we, we analyzed everything that has been said by the reviewers, and we've made uh, changes in the, in the paper accordingly. That's their response to the reviewers. Uh, of course, the reviewers are not going to be happy with that. Uh, they will still do their work. They will go there to the, the new ver version of the paper, and. They will go back to, their, to what they had requested, and they will see if the, 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 the new version of the paper either uh, does what they, they, they had asked for, or at least provides explanations that make the previous comments uh, not necessarily uh, uh, still reasonable, let's say. But it, 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 it puts a lot of burden, a lot of work uh, on the reviewer's back, right? And w when the author is the one who wants to be published, it's very easy for the reviewer, when uh, exposed to, to a review, uh, to, 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 to revision of a paper that seems to have been done in a poorly fashion, to say, well, no, they, they, didn't, they didn't do what I asked for. I believe that this paper should be rejected. So a good letter to the reviewers is an important step towards having a paper uh, eventually published. Okay? Let's see another example here. Uh, Maybe the interviewed CDO, Chief Digital Officer, led the author to think that digital transformation is something that is happening now when he says, I believe 
that the CDO is a temporary role, especially for the digital transformation. It is curious that CDOs themselves think that, considering that we think that, considering that we have been seeing digital transformation, or at least something that is difficult to distinguish from it, which is that uh, that uh, IT enabled uh, business transformation, happen over 30 years, and it seems to be far from from over. Although the pandemics and other recent events seem to have accelerated the digitalization digi digitization of uh, even more traditional businesses. That was my remark, and let's see what the authors wrote here uh, as being their response to it. The temporary role of the CDO has been alluded to, to by several authors. Some pundits uh, see it as a temporary because they are sure that digital transformation will fail. Some CDOs, as a GAG is the person they interviewed, see it as, a tempor as, as, as temporary because it will stop when the transformation is completed. Our view is that while the initial phase of the digital transformation may be more intense, it is unlikely that the CDO will disappear as a role, at least so long as digital technologies are prevalent, because there will always be new ways to apply these digital technologies in support of organizational processes. You know, here I feel that they are agreeing with me. Uh, they're, they're saying the same thing, but I have the doubt. I have a doubt here if they included this in the paper, right? Because in the, in the previous version, and, and, and they did include, right? I, 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 of course, I reread the paper to, to give my final decision. Uh, but it would be much easier if they had written here at the end of, uh, after having said how they agreed with what I was saying, uh, if they had said, notice, and we included a paragraph in, on page three or five or whatever that states precisely this uh, and makes it clearer that uh, we, we are not, uh, uh, that although there is some extent literature that says that the CDO function is something that, or the CDO role is something that will be there just for a little while. And, uh, and in spite of that also being the opinion of the executive that we interviewed, considering that it's an opinion paper, right? We do believe that this is going to be uh, a role that will be around for much longer. It may change names. Uh, in fact, I do not understand why I myself, why companies decide to have a chief digital officer if they already have a chief information officer. In fact, I think that when they do have the two positions, uh, the two C-suite um, executives, it is probably because the CIO was never a CIO. The CIO was just a an informatics manager, someone who was much more technical in terms of the technology itself than someone that was able to think uh, technology strategically. Right? Uh, so. Understand that, that they could have done more here, right? They could have not just agreed with me, but okay, if, if they agree with me, but that doesn't go to the paper, the, the debate that happens between reviewers and, and authors here, if it doesn't go to the paper, it's going to be lost because nobody else is going to see uh, this conversation that is happening here. In fact, uh, I'm showing it also here to you so that you understand that when, when a review happens, a lot happens. You know, there's a lot of people involved. In this case, it was four reviewers uh, giving their opinions and then the authors exchanging their ideas and their ideas with the reviewers some reviewers satisfied and saying I'll be I'll be okay with this paper being published that was my case in fact uh, uh, considering that the, the journal has if, if the, the journal has an opinion section I think that this paper could easily be published there but other reviewers may even say look I still need more and and the authors will then have to go on on a second round of reviews and we would receive a review to um, Paper again with another table like this, saying how they addressed each of the reviewers' new uh, concerns uh, or concerns that they already had in the first role of review, but uh, that were not addressed uh, uh, suitably. Um, and, uh, and and so there's 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 a lot of things that happen before a paper is published, and this is why usually when we see a journal paper published, and mainly if it's in a good uh, journal that does serious. Uh, Peer, uh, peer review, uh, we will see that the paper is smooth because uh, all the edges, all the problems it had, or, or at least most of the problems that it had in its original version, have already been corrected by means of this process. Okay? Uh, going further, another comment that I had here, uh, the interviewed CDO also says that his office has been involved in corporate business strategy development and the formulation of corporate policies regarding cybersecurity corporate social responsibilities, digital governance, and ethics, and so on. The author should reflect on if those should not be someone else's responsibility. The same way one may want to free the CEO of 
direct digital transformation strategy formulation and implementation, it does not seem reasonable to charge the CDO with this sort of responsibilities. The author will have to decide if this should be done based on his her opinion, especially if the idea is to keep this as an opinion paper, or the literature, which could be used to counter the interviews, interviewee's uh, opinions. In fact, the intervie interviewee could have been asked if he thought that uh, concerning uh, with uh, cybersecurity should be a CDO's responsibility or, uh, responsibility, or if that was something that happened in the organization due to the lack of leadership on that matter in the specific case of the organization. Again, those were my remarks. Uh, let's see how they responded to that. Good point. We went back to AJ to ask these very questions. Uh, his view is that he is primarily responsible for the strategic growth perspective, whereas the CIO is responsible for the more operational level. We document this later information in the paper. Uh, this also informs our opinion about the nature of what it, uh, what it is that a CDO does. Uh, notice again, that when they say here, we document this later uh, in the paper, it, it puts the burden of having to check if that was really done uh, on the on the reviewer's shoulder, right? I had to go there, back to the, to the, the paper and check if they had done this. Uh, if I were them, uh, and it wouldn't be difficult for them to, to say, we, we, we document this uh, information in the paper by including uh, these three paragraphs in session, whatever. And then they included here and I already know, okay, they did what I, I asked for, or at least they reflected about it. They may have done something completely different to, to what I asked, but it, the paper now makes sense anyway. Uh, so this is how the authors have to to interact with uh, the reviewers. And, and notice that if, if they do it in a way that th they provide a table like this in which on the left you have what the, the, the reviewers asked and on the right you, you have what the authors did to make sure that the re reviewer is, is happy, it's very difficult for the reviewer at the end to say, well, tough luck, I didn't like what you did. Because if, if they did it right, the, the reviewer will almost have, have to say, yes, the paper is now okay. So let's say strategically, it's good to have a good um, response letter to the, the reviewers. Uh, and I still had some more here. So the interviewee complains that he has work uh, with uh, them uh, with patiently, the, the, the company employees, to get, sorry, just a second, to get, uh, to get their collaboration. Uh, it's interesting that the problem seems to be the same as 30 years ago. Uh, people are either not interested to change because they feel they, they will lose power and control over their processes, and managers seem incapable of convincing them that that does not need to be necessarily the case. Uh, Benjamin and Levinson, 93, had already depicted the problem and even proposed solutions for it in their uh, framework to managing IT enable change. Of course, their perspective may not be the most suitable to deal with the workers of today, but it's not a new unaddressed problem. And then they write back to me and say, yes, that's true. It's not a new problem. Resistance is an, as old as the hills. Uh, what was perhaps more remarkable was that even in a firm that sells digital transformation services to its clients, uh, its, its own internal employees are not interested in internal collaboration and change. In fact, this was something very interesting about this paper. I, I recommend if you have time, read the paper, of course, for, for those of you who are information systems researchers, uh, read this paper. It hasn't been published yet. And again, uh, I'm disclosing here, the, uh, I'm opening some, uh, a double blind review process here. And well, I, I still don't know who the author is. The author doesn't know who I am, but I'm, I'm showing it to you uh, just for the sake of uh, be your better understanding of the review process. Uh, but, but this was a very rich thing, uh, I, I think, that should be and, and could have been explored in the paper. They are a firm that sells technology for digital transformation, and they have problems themselves to, do, to perform their own digital transformation because its own, you know, those, those, the same people that sell digital transformation to other companies are against changing their own processes in the organization. That, that was quite, quite interesting to, to see how it happens there. Um, uh, does the people uh, the people char uh, charged uh, with digital transformation are themselves uninterested in digital transformation? So they sell digital transformation, but they are not interested in, in performing digital transformation themselves. Uh, then another uh, issue here: explain why you consider the most compelling classification of CDO types to be the most parsimonious. There is no argumentation, even in an, uh, in an opinative, uh, even an opinative one, towards explaining why the universalist versus specialist classification is considered 
best. Here it's because, I mean, they show a lot of, of classifications, a taxonomy of, of uh, possibilities or different types of CDOs. And then at the end, they simply say, well, the, the best one is the, is the simplest one, a universalist versus a specialist CDO, but they don't explain why. Again, either they, they explain it based on their opinion or based on the literature, uh, but notice that their response here, this test has been removed as we agree that there is no basis for it. So, uh, I mean, even, even for an opinion paper, you have to have strength in your argumentation. You, can, you cannot just state something if you cannot support it. Uh, let's see. I keep going. Notice that I, I, I'm probably the, the from the four reviewers, I, I was the one who wrote the most, possibly. It is risky and unnecessary to suggest that unless organizations want to appoint multiple people with CDO-related roles, a universalist is likely to be the most practical appointment. Maybe the author could only state that the interviewee opted for being a universalist and explain the reasons why this is apparently working for Silk Jade. Silk Jade is the, is the, the, the name. It's, it's, it's a fake name here, but it's, it's a name that they use in the, in the paper to refer to the company where, uh, where this uh, CDO works. Considering the views of this opinion paper are based on a single interview, exercising some caution in stating or suggesting things may be wise. The author acknowledges that it is, a, it, it is tempting to prescribe how organizations should plan for the Digital Transformation Journal, so don't. Remember, you said there are com uh, commonalities, yet each organization, each journey, journey is different. Uh, therefore, the one case you studied may enlighten other cases, but should not set the rules for any other case. Uh, and then they, their response to this is we have re rewritten uh, the text. Thank you for the insights. They were helpful for us as we repositioned the arguments. Uh, and still further, the author claims that a universalist CDO has many tasks, many challenges, and much change to enact. We believe that this requires a new mindset, one that is not hampered by other responsibilities, such as would be experienced by an incumbent CIO or CTO. This is the, the argument for a CDO. This statement gives me the chance of provoking the author a little further with something that bothered, uh, bothered uh, I believe it bothered me, from the beginning of my reading. Why does a company need a CDO to perform digital transformation? Hasn't that been the proposed task of a CIO from the time that kind of officer started being demanded by organizations? In other words, are those many tasks necessary, uh, ne necessarily the tasks of a universalist CDO? Or what an organization needs is a CIO that really acts like a CIO and not like an informatics uh, manager, uh, like those who were around in the 80s. And that since then, should have been replaced by people who look at technology uh, from a business, uh, sorry, from, from a business problem-solving perspective or a new business development perspective. It seems that this, sorry, it seems that this paper would gain a lot from discussing its ideas with all the literature that the information systems field has generated over the last few decades. I had already discussed this with you. Uh, I I find it interesting that we need uh, a new C suite. Uh, uh, position uh, uh, chief digital officer to do what we in the past we thought was the role of the CIO because the CIO was in the organization to organize and to make sure that the organization could uh, digitally transform itself although at that time we did not use this term digital uh, transformation we were more used to the IT enabled business uh, transformation okay uh, let's see what they they wrote here this statement has been removed and the argument ref arguments reformulated. We are grateful that you picked out these unreasonable arguments. We suggest that CDOs and CIOs have different remits. Yes, perhaps CIOs were indeed charged with digital transformation in the past. We now suggest that it is better to separate the roles of the CDO, looking after the strategic perspective, and then working with the CIO who looks after the operational perspective. Again, this is interesting that uh, they think of a CIO looking uh, after the operational perspective because the CIO function was, from the beginning, the proposition of it was, it was someone who, con who should concern about the use of technology in a strategic, strategically fashion. That was what has been suggested since the 90s. But again, uh, a lot of what we do in information systems depends on the current buzzwords, on the current trends. And if we have to call uh, a CIO a CDO so that a company uh, feels more up to date, let's say, uh, we'll just have to understand that and maybe we'll even have to change 
uh, uh, our well, the words that we use to express the same thing. All right. Um, I think those were my major remarks. Uh, there's one last, but maybe this. Uh, well, having said this all, I found the paper easy and interesting to read, and I believe that it may help practitioners and researchers to further explore the importance of a CDO to pave the roads of digital transformation ahead, even if what this officer is doing is not much different to what we all expected of the CIO some 30 years ago. Thank you for your critical support. And this was it. Then we have a fourth reviewer. Uh, I've been the, the, the editor to a few journals. Uh, well, I, I used to be the editor for Revista Eletrônica de Sistemas de Informação, which was a Brazilian journal. We, we stopped publishing it in 2018 because at that stage, uh, we felt that uh, the journal was not being had not been uh, considered important enough even by our information uh, systems uh, uh, community. People were trying to publish in other journals, even if they were not information systems, simply because they had here in Brazil they had a, a higher, let's say, score uh, in 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 the metrics that were used for promotion in universities and things like that. So we we decided that it was not worth uh, the effort. But I've, I, uh, since then, I've been work, uh, working as uh, an editor for other journals, uh, some international journals like Information Systems Journal, which is probably one of the three best journals in the world. I'm a senior editor there. I'm also a senior editor uh, at CAIS, the, the Communications of Association for Information Systems. Uh, in, uh, I, I hardly ever request for reviewers. Uh, I think it's, uh, I mean, you notice know, that there's a lot of work that reviewers have to put into making sure that they help the authors with their papers. So uh, that's uh, I prefer to save reviewers for when they are necessary. So I usually only have two reviewers. Uh, if I need a third opinion, that opinion is going to be my own. If there is a let's say a dispute among the reviewers, uh, but I, I, I don't, please don't expect to have four reviews to a paper you write. Most times it's going to be two uh, or three at the most. Uh, for seems to me more than more than we, 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 we should have here. I would have saved uh, at least one of these reviewers to review another paper. There's there's much more people writing than reviewing. Uh, I hope that you all become reviewers and that you become good um, supportive reviewers in the future because our community can only grow uh, if we have, of course, people developing research, but at the same time, if we have people that are backing up that research, saying what is right and what's wrong, and I think I've already told you that uh, in my, ma my my mental mathematics, I think that for each paper we we submit uh, to be reviewed uh, by a journal or by a conference, we should review at least three or four other papers just to balance the system. Otherwise, someone will be working, and it's an anonymous work, right? Right? It's work that people do, and and the rest of the world doesn't even notice. Uh, but it's a very important uh, work. So if we want to keep uh, academia working, we do need to put more uh, of uh, our efforts into performing good reviews in addition to writing our, writing our good uh, papers. Uh, all right, uh, I don't know if you, if you have any questions about this review process. Uh, uh, read this afterwards if you have time. Uh, read the paper. By the way, the, the paper is right, the, 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 the new version, the re review one version of the paper is right after. I think it's here. Okay. Uh, again, it's, uh, I think it's an interesting, for, for those of you who are information systems researchers, it's an interesting, easy to read paper on, 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 on this role of the, digital, the chief digital officer. Uh, it's not an academic paper in the sense you notice that all reviewers were saying you have pro a problem here because we don't like opinion papers. Uh, even, even people like me who said, well, it could be published if you do have a session on opinion papers. But there is very little room for opinion papers, the same way as there is very little room for essays. Remember the first kind of, uh, of paper that we talked about, and, and I discouraged you from, from writing because uh, those usually have to be invited papers. But anyway, I, I found this paper interesting to, to read, and, and I think in your case it will be interesting to read the paper and then read the reviews again. <coughs> of course, this is the version of the paper that has already... Uh, uh, try to meet those uh, reviewers' expectations. This is not the original version of the paper, so it's already an improved version. But uh, I, I wonder if you will get the same impression that I did, that it's an interesting paper to read, but at the same time, the fact that they only interviewed one one um, person and, and the way they did, it, it is actually not more than not much more than just 
uh, an opinion, which makes it a little more difficult to, to publish. Any questions about this process? Uh, this is, in fact, what you will be doing, right? You will be writing uh, your... For, for those of you, everyone who has sent me a has sent me a uh, uh, has submitted their, their their papers for the colleagues to review here what i will do today and, and where is that just a second let me go back there so what i'll be doing i i, I hope that most of you have already submitted uh, your your paper to be reviewed what i will do today after the game, right, from now, in fact, I want to finish a little earlier. The Brazilians here all want to prepare for for, for our game at uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. So in one hour from now, no, yeah, about an hour from now. Katja is the only one who's, who's not concerned with, with this game, specific game now. But I, I think that she also has her concerns uh, with the the German team, right, <laughs> that, that, that has already played yesterday or, or the day before. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, what I will... Uh, uh, yes, please. Um, uh, Marina is, is saying that she has to submit. Please resubmit. What I will do is today, later in the afternoon, I will check the papers that I have here, and I will send to 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 other people um, uh, their colleagues' papers. I'll, I'll send to each one of you two papers from 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 two colleagues for you to review from today until our last class, which will be next week, right? And then uh, there will be a, a place for you there to to, to upload your reviews. Uh, we will not do this, uh, think of, after you receive reviews, you're not going to prepare these tables uh, because we don't have a, a, any more time. Uh, but that would be something that you would do if uh, you were, uh, if, if those, if these papers of yours were being submitted to a journal. Again, to a conference, you usually do not keep this conversation with reviewers, but if it was a journal, that would be the way things would go. And, and so uh, today, in, in a few hours from now, I will check all the papers that I have here. I noticed that we already had, before this class, the, the class started, we had seven submissions. Uh, and I will um, we'll, we'll share them among you. Uh, Katia will, will probably be, I, I, I haven't checked, but I think that uh, the Brazilians all wrote in Portuguese. So Katia, you, you may not uh, receive any paper to review. Maybe you'll have uh, uh, some free time from today until uh, next week, unless I get a paper in, in, in English uh, there in, in the middle, right? Uh, but all of the others, you will be um, receiving papers to read, yeah, to read and review. Yes, Patricia. Teacher, você irá encaminhar para o nosso e-mail? Uh, yeah, I'll send it. I'll, I'll send to you through through email in a few hours from now, right? I, I just want to focus on the the Brazilian game uh, uh, in the World Cup uh, until until four o'clock in the afternoon. After that, I'll be back here and check. By, and by the way, that gives people uh, some additional uh, time to to send their 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 papers still. Any, any questions about this, guys? Uh, had you all right? Uh, what, what I uh, I think I included here below a few maybe a few questions that you could use in your reviews, right? Uh, these are questions that many times appear in uh, in the, the, the in the reviewers um, in, the, in the form that the reviewer has to fill in to the to, to the editor or, or to send to the, the journal. So. Those things that we have, we've already been discussed. Is the objective clearly stated in the paper? Uh, is the paper or is, the, is, the, the, is the, the, the objective or the research question well justified in terms of relevance to the field of research? Has the author explored the extant literature? Not to re reinvent the wheel uh, uh, with, with his work, but, uh, but uh, it, well, precisely to make sure that you're not doing something that someone has already done, right? We want to, this is also done as part of the justification, right? Do the methodological procedures make sense? Are the results interesting? And do they contribute to the discussion of the chosen topic? Are the conclusions based based on the results of the study? You have to be, <coughs> sorry, you have to be very careful with respect to that because sometimes people get really enthusiastic in their conclusion session and they start concluding uh, based on their own impressions about, you know, about life, right? And our conclusions in a paper have to be very specifically uh, related to to the data we had and to the, the and to the uh, to, to the confrontation of our data with the literature and so on and so forth so we don't conclude about things that we did not study okay uh, has the author presented the limitations of the study and provided the reader uh, the reader uh, of ideas about what can be done uh, the next future research this this usually appear in the in the, in the conclusion session 
uh, we usually have a paragraph discussing the limitations of the study and some possible future research. So these are only to make it easier for you to write, but you're going to write a text, right? Uh, you're going to write a few, you know. Uh, you, you've seen uh, uh, our, you, you have that, as an example, you have this uh, reviewing, this reviewer's letters here. So you already know what one expects from the, from the, the reviewers. Uh, you have an idea of how long this should be, I would say. Well, it depends on the paper that you're reading, right? Uh, a page provides information about possible. If, 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 if you're more experienced with that topic, if you know the topic that the person is, is talking about, you can even provide the author with uh, uh, suggestions of literature that could help. Uh, if you don't know the, the topic, don't worry. Then you're, you're only interested in the form, form the format, right? Uh, we want to know only we want to know if, if um, the author was able to follow our recipe, let's say. Okay. All right, guys. Any other issues? Uh, so what we'll do is from from now until well, from as soon as you receive any mail from me with uh, papers to review until uh, early next week, uh, you will work on the reviews. And then uh, the idea is that in our in our last uh, meeting next week, we talk about the experience of reviewing. Uh, we will not be talking about the specific reviews. Each, each uh, author will have received them and, and will be able to analyze them and decide uh, which, if, if, how they help to improve their work further. But I would like to talk about the, the experience of, of, of doing uh, the review. And uh, I will try to wrap up, you know, talking a little bit about everything that we did uh, over the semester. And hopefully uh, this has been uh, uh, a good experience for all of you. I hope that everyone learned something from this. Or became even when we didn't learn something, at least became uh, more, uh, uh, how I would say, uh, more um, well, trust what we already thought that was uh, the right thing to do. We we, we trust it uh, even more than we did before. Okay, so a good game for everyone this afternoon, and uh, see you uh, next week at uh, in the morning.